You've never failed me yet. You've never failed us. You are our king. You are our keeper. You are our Lord and our savior. You are everything that we need. So Jesus, we pray right now that even in this moment that you might come and present yourself with us in such a way, Lord, that you'll bring around uh, the miracles that we need, the, the financial miracles, the healing miracles, Lord, the emotional miracles, the, the, the relational miracles that we need in our lives right now. God, would you have your way among us? Jesus, right now, Lord, have your way in this room, in this space, online, God, with, with people like Alana right now and, and, uh, and Hannah and, uh, and all the other people that are commenting online that aren't in the room, God. Father, I pray right now that you'd have your way in their lives, Lord, that you'd be in their lounges, in their kitchens, wherever they are, if they're at work, God, right now, I pray you'd fill their workplace, that you'd fill their offices, Lord, that you'd fill their, uh, their, their kitchens or wherever it is, their gardens, wherever they're sitting and worshiping you today, God, I pray you'd presence yourself with them. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah, glory. Well, good morning, everyone. Um, Laura, could you do me a little favor, please? And on the, uh, on the Mac just there, if you could just scroll up a little bit so that we're at the bottom of the comments, that'd be really good. And uh, if you're watching online, then why don't you give us a share? Um, hopefully, uh, hopefully you can hear me and see me all right. Um, that's it, that'll do. Amen, Adele. Thank you, mate. And, uh, and I'll be able to see your comments over there and in the room, you know, this is Chav Church. So if you've got something to say, then, you know, don't say it too loudly, but, um, you know, give us a little wave if you want to add something. Um, I might not pay attention to absolutely everything because I've got to preach. You know what I mean? Uh, but, you know, we're used to that, aren't we? Um, after, our, um, after our sort of uh, talk today, uh, there'll be a moment where we sit down and we chat together in small groups about the Word of God today. And then we see how we can relate those, uh, what God is saying today, into our lives and how we can practically work that out in our lives. So, good morning, everyone. Oh, that went nice, wasn't it? Ah, see, how you didn't do that, did you? You could have had that moment of glory yourself. Okay, you're trying to get all to Jesus. All right, mate. There's always one smart guy, ain't there? You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> uh, so, uh, <laughs> go on, what are you saying? <laughs> Don't pay you for your looks. Come on, all right then. Um, so, uh, so, yeah, good morning. It is, it is a beautiful day. It is lovely outside. We're going to have church in the park later on. And, uh, you know, I ain't got to do nothing. So I'm half tempted just to, like, get some tan. You know, like, get a bit of, like, a, a sheet out on the floor or something and, and get some rays. I've got a new tattoo this week, so that needs a bit of sun, doesn't it? You know what I'm saying? So, uh, yeah, what? What? Is it, is it the opposite? I don't know these things, do I? Six months. Six months out of the sun? Never mind that, mate. No, 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 no. That's not the way we work. Oh, no. I trust the Lord with my body. Hallelujah. And he wants a golden temple. You know what I'm saying? Come on. <laughs> so, uh, so yeah, we're, we're so glad to be here today. We're so glad that you join us online. Please do hit the share button so that your friends and family can hear the word of God and so that they can see what God is doing among us. And that'll be really, really good news. So, um, you know, also, if you're on YouTube, hello, Alana. Um, she says, hey, all. Hey, Alana. Yeah, there you go. Um, so, uh, so uh, you know, if you're on YouTube, then hit the subscribe button and, uh, and you know, uh, we can all have a bit of a chuckle and, uh, and laugh together. We're going to grow as a community. And if you're in the room, then, you know, get ready because I'm sure God is going to speak to us today. Is that all right? We up for that? Yeah, we up for God doing something among us today? Yeah? Oh, isn't it good news when people start like, yeah, I love the response in here today. That's good, isn't it? Hello. How you doing, Jane? You all right, mate? God bless you, mate. I'm so glad you're here. Is it good at Jane and Malkaria? Yeah. Yeah, and the Eileen's here. Hello, mate. Hello, mate. You all right as well down there? Yeah, you sure? You're not too sure? Okay, that's cool. Excellent. So, um, so it's so good to see you all. It is absolutely lovely to be in church again and to be worshipping together again and to be hearing the Word of God together again, to be experiencing His presence together again. Isn't that good news? Um, so, we're, so it's worth just saying that we should have our face masks on now unless you're exempt. Um, so if you're exempt, then please don't put it on. Uh, please don't hear that. Say again. No, no, when you sit all the time during worship, uh, when you're in a worship environment, you have to wear a face mask throughout the whole service, okay? Um, I know everyone's just like, oh, I thought when we sat down, I think we would take off. No, that's not the law. The law is groups of six, you can't move outside of your groups of six, um, and, uh, and you must stay in those seats, okay? So you can't go walking around the building, and you have to wear a face mask the entire time that you're in here uh, during a worship service. Oh, no, that's the law, so, uh, so we stick to the law around here. Is that all right? Yes, glory, hallelujah. So, um, I'm preaching on Nehemiah today. So, uh, so as you know, we've been going through Jesus in the Old Testament. Uh, for those of you guys who have been keeping up with this, we've been looking at a different character, a different story in the Old Testament each week for a long time now. It must have been about a year, is it? 
more than a year probably we've been going through this journey um, I can imagine it's probably going to go on for another year or so I don't mind a nice long uh, what's the word I'm looking for a nice long uh, series that's the one uh, you know because um, there's something beautiful about a series which is sometimes stuff is highlighted to you that you would never see before because you're looking for it you know so um, so we're looking at Nehemiah today so if you've got a Bible then you're looking at about maybe a third of the way through your scriptures today you'll find Nehemiah you'll see Ezra, Nehemiah and Esther um, it's all sort of part of the same period of time. So what you see in the Old Testament is the people of God, they were after a king. And then God gives them David, who is the most beautiful, wonderful king ever. In fact, by far, uh, the people of Israel's best king, actually, I'd say. And, uh, and he, he had a real heart for God. And then his son, uh, Solomon, uh, takes over the throne from him after he dies. And then after Solomon, it all goes a bit pit, Pete Tong, doesn't it? Don't it, Malcolm? It all goes a bit of Pete Tong after Solomon. So you see good king, bad king, good, it's good and bad all the way through. And you get loads and loads of crazy stuff happening. And, uh, and loads and loads of things um, like go wrong, essentially. And we get to this place in Scripture where essentially um, God's like, you know what? I'm going to let them wallow in their mess. I'm going to let them wallow in their mess, you know. So maybe today you're, uh, you're in the room or you're online and you're going, my life's a total and a mess. Why is that? Well, you wanted to sin, and so God's letting you wallow in your mess. Yeah? Because sometimes that happens, right? And then eventually, like the people of God, you go, Oh, my life's such a mess. Oh, I, wish I, I wish I could get back to God in the way that I used to be. And then someone like Nehemiah comes along. Someone like Ezra comes along. Someone like Esther comes along and helps you to get back to God. Because let's face it, you know, like we do, don't we? We go on our little whirlwind adventure. We go and sin. We go and live a life of sin. We go and do what we want. We, we walk away from God. We go on a messy journey, don't we? Yeah, anyone else been there? Yeah, even after you become a Christian? Yeah, come on. Don't be shy. Yeah, yeah. You, and anyone else been a right sinner after you become a Christian? Yeah, thank you. Yeah, I, I knew you was all sinners. Um, come on, no, I'm kidding. <laughs> Glory. Um, you know, um, I, I've been quite lucky. I'll be honest with you. I think, um, I think um, the thing that I did most wrong um, after I became a Christian was I was still really angry for a long time, uh, which you can sort of understand because I did like, have loads of trauma in my background. But still, um, I thought I was mad holy when I first got saved. I thought I was the most holy person around. I also thought I knew, anything, I knew everything. And, and anyone else out there thought they knew everything? Yeah, yeah, that's, that's at least one of us. Uh, none of you sticking your hands up. I know you all like it, so you know what I mean. Like, yeah, you all thought you knew everything, right? You all thought you knew how to run a church better than pastor, didn't you? Yeah, yeah come on, hallelujah. Um, and uh, and you all thought that you, you know, because you you got one person saved once, it meant that you're the greatest evangelist on the planet, right? Yeah, come on. I, I know you're all out there. Come on. And, uh, and, and, and you all felt that way, right? But we do, don't we? We go on this messy journey. And for me, um, I, I was angry right up until. I'd say my second year of Bible college, you know, um, when, uh, when in between first and second year, um, I, I heard a, spe- a preacher speaking about addiction. And they said, they said, you know, if you were addicted before you met Jesus and then you get saved, and you come to the church, you very quickly get addicted to serving Jesus because that becomes a new thing that you're addicted to, you know. And, uh, and then, I, and, you know, so you need to take some time out of ministry is what this person was saying. And I was like, oh, you know, because whenever I go to church, I don't think, oh, I wonder what God's saying to my next door neighbor. You know, anyone else do that? You know, like, oh, this word's for you, Dazza. You, you know, listen to your own preaching, Dazza. You know, you really grow from it, right? Anyone? Yeah? Anyone else thinking that right now? I know what you're thinking. Because <laughs> we do, don't we? We do, don't we? You know what I mean? Like, oh, yeah. Oh, I need to go and tell Ethel that this was a word for her today because I'm going to pray for her after the service. You know, like, this is so for Ethel. And we, and we don't actually listen to what God is saying for us personally. But I'm, I'm the opposite of that because I heard someone say this when I first got saved. Darren, when you're in church... You need to be listening to what the Word of God is saying to you and your personal life and circumstances. Don't be thinking about Ethel. Don't be thinking about Bobby. Just listen to God for yourself, you know. And so, and so this preacher said this thing, and I was like, oh, yeah, I, could, I might be addicted to serving God. So I went and had counseling. You know, I, I went and uh, saw a psychologist uh, in our Bible college, and I had proper, proper decent psychology, you know, and, and counseling and stuff. And, and I'll be honest with you, it took a little while, you know, it took a little while for me to understand, you know, that um, actually I was just really sad, you know, I was just really sad. But the only thing I knew in all of my childhood was anger, you know. So whenever I felt sad, I'd put my fists up and be angry. You know, and so that was my life. And then as soon as I started learning about myself and learning about my emotions, it's at that point then I started going, oh, actually, no, I'm just sad. 
What do you do when you're sad? I need a cuddle, actually. Luckily, I've got a lovely wife who cuddle me loads. Isn't that good? And she feeds me, you know, because my belly is definitely the way to my heart, you know, as you can see from the side. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, come on. It's glorious, isn't it? And so it took a long time to change, you know? And I was still sinning in my anger. I was still getting angry and being abusive and angry at people, you know what I mean? And so that was my journey. And so let me say that I'm just like everyone else. Yeah, I'm not perfect. I'm no one special. I'm just a guy who's been given the mic today. You know what I mean? And so we do. We're like the people of God. We go, yes, Lord. No, God. Yes, no. Yes, no. I'm up for it. No, I'm not up for it. I want to go my own way today. Oh, God, I need you. You know what I mean? Like, that's a journey that we go on, isn't it? You know what I mean? Anyone else there? Yeah? Come on. Be honest. Um, hallelujah. So, um, so, yeah, that's a journey that we're on. And that's where we find the people of God. They've been taken captive because God's just said, you know, if you don't want me, if you want to go and do your own thing, then ego, you go and do your own thing without my protection. And then what happens is another nation comes along and takes them all captive, called the Persians, okay? And that's where we find Nehemiah, Ezra, and Esther, or Ezra, Nehemiah, and Esther, okay? And so, and so these guys, essentially, they're, they're in captivity. And then we find Nehemiah. And this is what Nehemiah chapter 2 says, okay? So um, let me read a little bit of this out. It says, and it came, to, it came about in the month of Nisan, I'm going to go for October. Um, in <laughs> I, think I'm, I think I might be right as well, I'll be honest with you, because I think that's, that's the month that John was born, and John was born in October. Um, you should read your Bibles more. Come on. Um, in <laughs> in the, uh, in the, you're all going to check that out later, aren't you? You're going to have false prophet. Um, in, the, in the 20th year of King Artaxerxes, uh, that wine was before him, and I took up the wine and gave it to the king. Now, I had not been sad in his presence. So the king said to me, why is your face sad, though you are not sick? This is nothing but sadness of heart. Then I was very much afraid, and I said to the king, let the king live forever. Why should my face not be sad when the city, the place of my father's tombs, lies desolate and in its gates have been consumed by fire? Uh, then the king said to me, what would you request? Yeah? So as we read on, we see that um, Nehemiah is the cup bearer to the king. Nehemiah is the cup bearer to the king. So his job is basically to, uh, to take uh, the, uh, any sort of wine or food even. He's supposed to have a little munch of it first or drink of it first. And then if he dies, then the king doesn't eat it or drink it. You know what I mean? And so he is the tester uh, for poison or anything that tastes a little bit funky. So you know sometimes when you drink like, a bit of uh, juice or something, it tastes a bit metallic. Anyone ever had that before? You know what I mean? And then you're like, oh, that tastes a bit weird. What's going on there? Well, the government... No, I'm not going to go there. Um, I'm kidding. Um, <laughs> but, but the idea is that, um, that the cupbearer would, would taste that and go, hang on a minute, this doesn't taste quite normal. I think something's been added to this. Um, King, you know, don't drink this wine, you know. And so that's what the cupbearer would do. And, and as we look at that, we see, uh, we see this moment where literally, it's almost word for word, isn't it, uh, what happens in the Garden of Gethsemane. Jesus says, he brings the cup of sacrifice to the king. Oof, oh, I'm getting goosebump pools. He brings the cup of sacrifice to the king. And he says, if this cup can pass from me, then let it be, but I'll do whatever you say, king. What's the Bible say? It says that in that moment, Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane was stricken with sadness and fear. So much so that he sweat drops of blood. And so what we see is we see one cupbearer being likened to another cupbearer. Nehemiah comes to the king, the cupbearer comes to the king in sadness. Jesus comes to the king, the cupbearer, in sadness. But that's not where the story like, ends, you know, because at this moment, Jesus is about to go to the cross. You know, there's a day before Jesus goes to the cross, and it's called Maundy Thursday for those of you that are interested in this sort of stuff. And what is happening is Jesus is there the night before praying, you know, like literally bringing his sacrifice before God, bringing his cup before God, bringing his, bringing his all before God, saying, you know, I'm going to really need your help right now, Daddy, you know. I'm really afraid. I'm really hurting. And what's about to happen is, just like in Nehemiah's time, the temple of Jesus is about to be destroyed. Because his body is the temple, he says. He also says that your body is the temple as well. Paul says that, that if we are destroyed with him, or if, our, if we die with him, then we will live with him also. 
if we die with him, if our temple is destroyed with his temple, then our temple will be rebuilt with his temple also. Nehemiah is the cupbearer who rebuilt the temple. Nehemiah is the cupbearer who rebuilt the temple. So you can imagine what's happened here is, it's, he literally says in those verses, doesn't he, that, that the temple itself and the city of God has been burnt down. It's been destroyed. It is now uh, absolutely desolate. It has been absolutely ransacked. All the gold is gone. Um, at this point, we don't even know where the Ark of the Covenant is. Um, and as far as I'm aware, we didn't actually find it again. Although if you're into YouTube videos and conspiracies, you might be able to pinpoint it somewhere. Um, but... Um, <laughs> But, um, you know, um, if, uh, if, if, if you read the Bible, then essentially at this point, the Ark of the Covenant is gone. God's throne is gone. Okay? And it's not going to come back. Instead, he is making a throne for himself in heaven, the Bible says. He's making a throne for himself in heaven. And so um, it is my understanding that Jesus takes his throne from earth and puts it in heaven. And then it says that he goes before us to build us a house in heaven. He goes before us to build a temple in heaven, a mansion in heaven, a castle in heaven where he lives in the Holy of Holies, which is now in heaven. It's not on earth. And so if you're someone who loves to go over to Jerusalem and, and you want to go to the Holy of Holies, don't be surprised if uh, if the place doesn't have much feel to it because it's not the Holy of Holies anymore. The Holy of Holies is in heaven. Because after the temple was destroyed, Jesus rebuilt it. And so Nehemiah in this moment, Nehemiah is the cupbearer who rebuilt the temple. And so um, you'll see as you go through Nehemiah that, um, that they rebuild the temple. Then you've got Ezra working on bringing back the law. Then you've got Esther working on the king as well. And all this stuff is all coming like a, like a crescendo together. It's a beautiful thing. And what we see is that after the temple has been destroyed... The sad cupbearer um, goes to the king, and uh, and they work on getting it rebuilt. So, so what what's this all about? What's this what's this, what's this mean for Jesus? How does this relate to Jesus? Well, Jesus, it, the Bible says that after he had been killed. So you're wondering why was he killed? Anyone ever wonder why he was killed? You know, why did Jesus die after all? Well, the Bible says that every single person in life has walked away from God. Every single person has walked away from God, okay? And the Bible says that um, it's a bit like um, as we walk away from God, because God is our life source, our spirit's life source, our spirit dies within us, okay? So you may remember um, uh, Adam and Eve. God said, um, if you eat of the tree of the no a tree of knowledge, then, uh, then of good and evil, then you will surely die. And then they eat of the fruit, and then what happens is, um, they don't die physically, do they? But it does say that all of a sudden, they were ashamed. They were ashamed, you know. And they felt shame because they were naked. And so something had happened to their spirit that hadn't happened to them physically. Nothing actually happened to them physically, did it? And so it's a spiritual thing. They died spiritually. Because they chose to walk a different way to God, they died spiritually. Almost like a little sunflower, you know. As a sunflower jumps out of its pot and starts walking off by itself, it'll wither and die, right? And so that's what we do when we walk away from God. Interestingly, I was just talking to the mother-in-law this week, and uh, we was talking about Adam and Eve and that moment where God uh, sacrifices an animal to cover their shame. And uh, I said to them, the most beautiful thing about this is that, is that an artist would destroy his own artwork because he wants to cover someone's shame because he loves them so much. That's a beautiful thing, isn't it? And so God wants to cover your shame. God wants to cover you. He wants to, he wants to help you. He wants to get you back into a place where you're alive again. And so the Bible says that, um, that he put this sort of practice into place where, where you know, for everyone uh, that you, that every like, thing that you ever do wrong, any, anything that draws you away from God, it can be forgiven if there's a sacrifice. Um, as it happens, um, Jesus is that sacrifice. So the Bible says that Jesus was a temple of God who was destroyed upon the cross. And so we find Jesus in the grave. And he's in the same place as Nehemiah, who's just about to rebuild the temple. And he's calling out to God. I want to please you, God. I want to love you, God. I can imagine what Jesus is doing down in the grave in there. The Bible says that he went down into the depths 
And he met with a guy called Satan. And then what he did was he gave him a swift headbutt and they booted him. And then he took, <laughs> and then he stamped on him a few times because, you know, Jesus is just like me, right? And then, uh, and <laughs> and, oh, kid, oh, kid, oh, kid. And then he took the keys to life and death off of him. And he says that he rose from the grave with his own power. So if you read the Gospel of John, it says, it says this. It says that Jesus says that I choose to lay down my own life and I choose to take it back up again. Here's the thing, right? Never mind all the sacrificial system. Never mind all that sort of stuff. Here's the big thing, right? You can't just get a life from nowhere. You can't just get a life from nowhere. And so if I want to give you something, then I have to lose something, right? Yeah? If I, have to give, if I want to give you something, that means I've got to lose it. So here's a bottle of water. If I said today, hey, Phil, or Rose, whoever's easier to get up, Here's my bottle of water. I've got a bottle of water. If you want this water, then I've got to give it to you, right? Here you go. So I'll give you this bottle of water. There you go. You have that bottle of water. Now, guess what? I don't have a bottle of water anymore, right? Yeah? It's the same with Jesus. So Jesus takes his life and he gives it to us. He takes his life and he gives it to us. And because Jesus is so much better than everyone else, and is so much stronger, he is God. In all honesty, he can actually just breathe life into you, so he didn't even need to give his own life away if he didn't want to. Because he could just breathe life, doesn't he? He just gives life willingly. You know, Adam, when he first got created, what did Jesus do? Jesus didn't die then, did he? Oh no, he just breathed life into him. You know what I mean? Because Jesus can give life however he wants. But for the sake of us and understanding it logically, Jesus gave his life to you so that you could have life. And then the Bible says that just like Nehemiah, Jesus started to rebuild his temple. So he, he breathed life into his own lungs. How do you do that? He's dead. Yeah, but Jesus is bigger than death. Death isn't a thing to him. Gravity isn't a thing to him. Time isn't a thing to him. None of that stuff matters. He created it all. He's outside of it all. And so he can give himself life again. And so the Bible says, Jesus said, in three days I will rebuild the temple. Yeah? Destroy this temple and in three days I'll rebuild it. Yeah? And so we see Jesus, the cupbearer, who rebuilds the temple. Why does he rebuild the temple? Anyone know? He, re- he rises from the grave for a few different reasons. Number one is that he essentially turns around and says, hey, you know, if I can't raise myself from the grave... How do you expect me to be able to raise you? Yeah, so the evidence that he can raise you from the dead, if you're dead in your sin right now, if you're dead in your wrongdoings, if you've walked away from God and now you're dead spiritually, if you're dead spiritually, then how does he raise you from the dead? What's the evidence that he can do so? Well, if he can raise himself, then he can raise me, right? Yeah? That's really good evidence, isn't it? Yeah? Then the Bible says that he has gone up to heaven to build us a place to live. Yeah? The Bible says that he is the first among many brothers. So if he's the first among many brothers, then the fact that he goes there means that I can follow him there. If Jesus didn't rise from the grave, if he didn't go up to heaven, then guess what? How am I going to get there? Who knows the way? Do you know the way to heaven? No. Do anyone else know the way to heaven? How am I going to get there if Jesus isn't leading me there? You know what I mean? Like, how does that work? Of course he has to raise from the dead. Of course he has to rebuild a temple. Of course. He has to go up to heaven because if I'm going to follow him up to heaven, then I need to actually follow him. I can't just like, yeah, thanks for the life, Jesus. Now what do I do with it? Hang around like a ghost. You know what I mean? That's not the way it goes, is it? That's not the way it goes. Ghosts go down there, don't they? People that don't have Jesus go downwards. That's what the Bible says. People that do have Jesus, they follow his trail. They follow his trail up to heaven. The Bible says that he went through death for a reason. You know, one of the reasons he went through death is so that he, he can take you through death. You know, in death, everyone's, the thing that you're most afraid of, right, is that you're going to be alone. I'm going to be alone on my deathbed. I'm going to die all alone. I'm, you know, I came into the world naked, kicking and screaming. I'm going to go out of the world. That, that's what they say, isn't it? I'm going to go out of the world naked, kicking and screaming. I'm poor. Um, you know, but the Bible says that as I enter into the next life, not only am I rich, but I've got someone to lead me through that. So I don't need to be afraid of death. Because Jesus is with me even in death because he's been through that journey himself. And then he raises from the grave and he leads me through life, through death, into life. And he can do that because he rebuilt the temple. Jesus, how about now though? I'm poorly right now. 
I'm hurting right now. I'm in need right now. But the Bible says that you are a temple of God. It says that you have God in you. If you're a Christian today, then the Bible says that you have the Holy Spirit in you. And so you have become the temple of God. Yeah, it doesn't mean that, you know, your body's perfect. Oh, no, 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 no. We all know that, right? I'm in pain, right? Yeah? My, my body aches all the time, especially now I'm getting a bit older. I feel sorry for you guys that are even older than me, you know what I mean? Like, bless y'all. Um, I'm not looking forward to that day, you know what I mean? Because my body hurts enough as it is, you know what I'm saying? But, but the truth is that my body hurts. So, so it's not that I'm a temple of God as in, like, my body is perfect, the thing that makes me a temple, right? So I can have a perfect body and not have God in me. That doesn't make me a temple, does it? No. It doesn't, does it? Yeah? So unless I've got God in me, I'm not a temple, right? Yeah? So I could have the best body or could have the broken body. But whichever way I go, if I've got God in me, then I'm a temple. If I don't have God in me, then I'm not a temple. What's the, what's the defining thing? Having God in you. Yeah? Yeah? So if anyone ever says, oh, you shouldn't get tattoos because you're the temple of God, hey, you know, read your Bible, bruv. Um, that's not what a temple has. You know, temples don't have, you know, a temple can be a, a stone-like cave. And as long as it's got God in it, it's a temple. Am I right? I'm right and I. Come on. Who's giving some truth today? Yeah? Yeah? My body could be like absolutely beautiful, golden, massive, and, and ginormous and glorious and have beautiful curtains and, you know, a hot tub. And, um, and, and if it doesn't have God in it, then guess what? It's not a temple. Yeah? It's not what you look like that makes you a temple. It's what's in you that makes you a temple. And so today, you are the temple of God. Yeah? It's pretty, it's pretty easy stuff, isn't it? Come on. It's, it's, it's not rocket science, is it? And Jesus says this, he says that he wants to heal your temple. He wants to rebuild your temple today. Okay, because, hey, welcome to Pentecostal Church, everyone. In this building, we don't just hear words, we do action, okay? And Jesus is up for action today. He told me, all right? <laughs> he told me, he said, I'm up for doing something today. I'm up for rebuilding some more temples. Anyone got a broken temple in this building? Yeah, come on. Yeah, Malcolm's laughing like, yeah, I've got some of that going on. I do. I do. Like, right, right now, my feet underneath my heels, they hurt, you know. And, uh, and it's because I, <laughs> because I should have had two weeks off my feet, but I can't. I ain't got time for that. Ain't no one got time for that. Anyway. Um, yeah. But my, my temple's broken and needs rebuilding. Anyone got anything going on in their body right now that needs healing? Because Jesus is able to rebuild you right now. Not only is he like Nehemiah in that he builds a stone temple. Because right now he's building a stone temple up in heaven, right? Yeah? He also rebuilds his physical body, which is a temple. And he offers this to you that he rebuilds your temple too because you are a temple of God. And then you're like, but hang on a minute, pastor. I don't have Jesus in me because I'm not born again. Oh, no. What are we going to do? You can't be a temple if you're not born again, right? Yeah? If you've not got God in you, then how can you be a temple? Amen. Preach it, pastor. Or evangelist, whatever you are today. Um, <laughs> come on. Maybe there's some people around who can hear what I'm saying. And you know that your body, your temple is broken. You know that your spirit is dead. You know that you've not done this journey very well so far. And you did walk away from God. And so your little sunflower, unfortunately, is wilted and died. And you need Jesus to rebuild it, to give it life, to bring it back to life. You want to be brought back to life in Jesus. Is there anyone who wants that? I know in the room, everyone's like, yeah, look, little Carmela's like, yeah, I want some of that. Yeah, Carmela, you can get born again in Jesus' name. Come on. Sophie was like six, I think, wasn't she? How old are you, Carmela? Six. Ah, beautiful. Come on. Little Carmela wants to have Jesus come into her life. Does anyone else want to have Jesus come into life? Yeah, look, all the kids are like, I want some. Yeah, you do. They all want Jesus in their lives, right? Come on, you can never be too young, can you? I remember when, when my two were younger, like, so Liam was a couple of years older than Sophie, and, and Liam was like, when I'm 11, when I'm 12, I'll know what I'm doing. I'm going to make a commitment to follow Jesus. You know, I'm going to do it right. 
I'm going to get it on the, I'm going to get it on the, on the dot. I'm going to sign on the dotted line. That's when I'll do it. And then Sophie goes and makes a commitment to follow Jesus in floods of tears and stuff in her bedroom at six years old. And then Liam's like, oh, I didn't know you could do it when you're this young. I might as well have a go as well. So a couple of weeks later, we're in a nice little Baptist church in a place called Gorsley. It's a big old cross up on the, up on the wall. And Jesus, uh, Liam already knows what he's going to do. He, you know, I'm his dad, so of course he knows. You know what I mean? So, so he decides that he wants to follow Jesus as well. He wants to invite Jesus into his life. And my two kids got born again in like the same space of like, what, two, two weeks or something, was it? No, no, it's Sophie first and Liam. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's the way it went. Come on, babe. Um, <laughs> you should know these things. <laughs> like, I, I remember the day they both got baptized as well. And Liam was in a freezing cold, like, uh, baptism tank that we couldn't heat up. Do you remember this, Malcolm? And there's, like, ice on top, wasn't it? And do you remember I, I put a load of anointing oil in it as well, didn't I? And then everyone was just, like, stanking. It was, it was a lovely day, but, ugh, you know. <laughs> and then the council said to me, if you ever do that in our building again, you're never using them, any of them, ever again. You know what I mean? Because uh, they had a massive wooden floor and I had this massive swim pool in it basically they were like you cannot do that ever again I was like okay my bad um, <laughs> um and then and then Sophie I think I put a picture uh, a video up of Sophie being baptized the other day up at the showroom one of the first young people that we baptized at the showroom uh, when we saw like a little sort of like move of God happening up there a few years back you know and it's just amazing isn't it that God can do stuff amongst our youth so yeah Carmela for sure you can you can have Jesus come into your life you know what I mean? Is there any other people, any, any other young people want Jesus to come into their life? You know, this could be a moment for you. And if you're online, then hey, you know, come on. I'm seeing loads of stuff on there. I can see Alana. Um, uh, she's got a question. Put your question in the comments there, Alana. And, uh, and then I can see Jenny. Come on, Jenny. Come on. Hallelujah. Jenny's already born again. You can't be born again twice. You just get forgiven. Second time around, don't you? You know what I mean? Like, you can't keep on being born again, can you? You know what I mean? I'm sure that's not what she's asking anyway. But maybe today is a day when you can say, yes, I want God in my life. And so maybe you're the type of person who's online or in the building who, who isn't so keen on being like, yeah, that's me, that's me, that's me. Instead, you're the sort of person who goes, yeah, I think that might be me. And so what we can do is we can say a prayer. You know, and if, and if there's young people in the room or old people in the room who want to accept Jesus' life, you know, if, if I've lost my bottle of water now, <laughs> if, if you want Jesus to give you his life, then maybe you can just say a prayer with me. You know? It's that prayer. You can pray this with me, just three lines. Yeah, is that cool? And mum and dad, if you want to go and pray this with a little and you want to welcome, go on. I think they're all, they're all keen on Jesus today, look. Come on. So if this is you and you want to pray this prayer, here we go. This is lush, isn't it? People are getting born into God's kingdom right now. Say this prayer with me. God, I'm sorry for walking away from you. I really want your life. So make me new. Give me life. Amen. Amen. I heard that amen over there, young lady. Glorious. Hallelujah. And, uh, and if any of you guys said that amen really quietly, then you're still born again. Is that right? You've still got God in you. Now we're going to move on to another part of our service where I'm going to invite people to stand. Let's all stand, shall we? And, um, and we're, going to, um, we're going to ask if you can stand. Um, uh, Alana, what we'll do is we'll come back and answer your question uh, in, uh, in our like, sofa time after the service, if that's all right. Um, so let me just... Uh, let's, I'll, I'll do that in a few minutes. I'm not going to do it now. Um, so what we're going to do now is we're going to have a time where we're going to trust God to heal our temple, to rebuild our temple, okay? Because the Bible says that he is able to heal you. It, it, the Bible actually says that he has given me and you authority to heal the sick and cast out demons. Who's up for healing the sick and casting out demons? That sounds exciting, doesn't it? Yeah? We up for that? Yeah, come on. Yeah, Carmela's like, I'm on that. <laughs> she's going to be a little evangelist, isn't she? She's going to be great. Come on. Hallelujah. If you need healing somewhere in your body today, then why don't you put your hand upon the place where it needs healing? Yeah, and certainly for Jane, if anyone wants to come, maybe Pastor Hazard can come and pray for Jane. That would be really good. Um, hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
Oh, glory. I'm really feeling God right now. I'm not sure about you guys. <laughs> I'm really feeling his presence right now, you know. Um, put your hand on the place where you need healing. Oh, I'm like, I wonder if I can get my slipper off. Hang on. I'll be like this, like, on one leg. I'm gonna, no, I won't do that. I'll fall over. Um, we're going to ask God to come, yeah? Simple as that. And you can do this online as well. You can see this. You can do this online. So right now, put your hand on a place where you need healing. That's it. Put your hand on that young man's leg. Come on. We're going we're to trust that those metal bolts are gone in Jesus' name. Oh, hallelujah. Glory. Come on. Let's, let's ask God to come. Come, Holy Spirit. Come, Lord Jesus. Right now. God, to all the people right now that are laying hands on others, that are laying hands on themselves, that are trusting you for the rebuilding of your temple. Jesus, right now, Lord, I pray by your power, by your might, with the authority that you've given me, I command be healed in Jesus' name. Hips be healed in Jesus' name. Leg be healed right now in Jesus' name. Fibromyalgia be gone right now in Jesus' name. Come on. These are just the ones that I know of. Shoulder be healed right now in Jesus' name. Come on. Eileen's lungs be healed right now in Jesus' name. Come on. Feel his presence. Holy Spirit, come. Come and move right now, Holy Spirit. Come and move in this place right now, Jesus. Walk around this place, Lord. We're not supposed to be laying hands on each other, so Lord, would you do it? Would you lay hands on your servants? Would you rebuild your temples? Right now, in Jesus' name. Across this room, across this land, across this world. As people respond everywhere. God, I pray that you would keep your promise. And that people would be healed and set free right now, in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Come Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit. We give glory to the one God. His name is Jesus. We await your coming. We love your presence. We want to know you more. We want to know you deeply. We want to feel your goodness. Thank you, Lord Jesus. We worship you and honor you. Thank you for being the rebuilder of the temple. Thank you for bearing my cup of shame. Thank you for bearing my cup of hurt. Thank you for bearing my cup of sin. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Amen, 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 amen.